Well, it's good, y'all. Welcome back to the K Reviews Podcast. Um, I was going to do a whole intro and everything. It's been a while since I made a video for you guys. But honestly, I just want to jump right into it because I feel like the space that hip hop is in right now is um, really sick. I I'm just excited to talk about everything that's going on, man. I'm such a fan of rap music. I'm such a fan of this art form. I'm such a fan of the legends that carried it in the past and the legends who are still carrying it right now. Um, I just think I think hip hop is in such a good place. I think it's continuing to evolve. Um, I, I, man, I'm, I'm I'm super stoked to talk about this. So let's let's get into as I'm recording this. It's about uh, seven eight a.m. Um, and it is the morning following Dreamville Fest. So so last night was the night that J Cole hopped on the stage at Dreamville Fest and essentially apologized to Kendrick Lamar for seven minute drill. Um, if you've been living under a rock, Kendrick popped out with the like that verse, essentially dissing Drake and throwing a couple of strays in there at Cole as well. The whole hip hop world, it's funny how one verse can fuck up the game. The whole hip hop world went fucking crazy. Everybody's talking about Drake got to respond. Cole got to respond. Everybody went crazy. Everybody's thinking beef of the greatest rappers in the game. This is going to be crazy. And for a second, and, and I think that it still might happen, but for a second, it looked like we were a full swing into that, um, at least in regards to Kendrick and Cole, because Cole decided to come out and put out a full track in response to Kendrick's Like That Verse from uh, Future and Metro's album. And... You know, there was mis mixed response to, to Cole's diss. Um, a lot of people, I saw a lot of people shitting on it. Um, obviously, you know, I saw some Cole fans saying he buried Kendrick and Kendrick is done. You know, everybody's biased in this conversation. Um, I'm going to attempt to be as unbiased as possible as I make this video. Um, but I should make it clear that I am a, you know, if you, if you look at my top five rappers, Kendrick Lamar is in there. J. Cole is not in there. Um, so I, I'm going to have some natural bias towards Kendrick, but I'm going to try my best to not have that be the case. I'm going to try my best to, to look at this from as objective of a, stu a viewpoint as possible. Um, now, when it comes to the diss itself, because I didn't, I didn't, I haven't made a video. I didn't make a video about the like that verse. I should have as soon as it dropped. I didn't make a video about seven minute drill, but I should have as soon as, I, as soon as it dropped. Um, but because I didn't, I'm going to talk about both of those both of those tracks and kind of my thoughts in general on them in this video, as well as my thoughts about J. Cole um, responding or not responding, but J. Cole apologizing for his response. Um, so I think I, I actually I, w I was going to start with seven minute drill, but let's let's go ahead and start with like that. Um, as as stated earlier, it, it's funny how one verse can fuck up the game because, um, you know, Kendrick didn't need <laughs> Kendrick didn't need much more than. He, uh, not even much more. Kendrick didn't need more than one verse at all. I mean, one verse, just like Control, one verse completely shut down the entire internet. Um, if you're a rap fan, you were just, this is all you were talking about. Um, so I, th I, I think there's something to be said with the fact that Kendrick, you know, doesn't have to pop out all the time, doesn't have to, um, you know, put out full projects or market anything or hop on Instagram and whatever else. He can just show up out of nowhere, drop a verse with some goofy ass voices, dip, and the whole rap game is fucked up. Like, uh, I think there is something to be said about that in regards to this verse. The fact that, I, and I don't know, I don't know exactly how long the verse is. I haven't counted the bars, but I think it's, I think it's just a 16. And the fact that one sixteen can come out and completely, have the whole fucking rap game in shambles. Um, that that that's that that gives some points to this verse for that alone. Um, but an a, a, another reason I give points to this verse is Kendrick coming out guns blazing. You know he's not on no laid back. I'm throwing some morning shots. He's 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 coming out guns bla blazing. The first thing he said was. Um, these brothers talking out of their necks. Like, that's the first thing he says. And granted, you don't know that he's talking about Cole and Drake yet. But once you listen to the verse once and you run it back, and you hear that line again, you're like, oh, the I, I think the wordplay on Kendrick's verse was really great. Uh, Say it's a lot of goofies with a check was a really nice line because it can be interpreted as there's a lot of idiots or stupid people with money. But there's also a lot of goofies with a check in the sense that he's calling Drake a goofy and Drake is signed to Nike, a check. There's a lot of goofies with a check. So wordplay there. 
Um, you know, he had alliteration with, I hope them sentiment symbolic, my temperament, bipolar, choose violence. Um, Kendrick always coming with internal rhymes as well. Um, brothers clicking up, but cannot be legit. No 40 water, uh, the fucking wordplay there as well. So, you know, I saw, I saw when I saw people comparing a uh, seven minute drill to like that, a lot of people were saying like, Oh, you know, Cole, come out here with these bars, and Kendrick just says, motherfuck the big three, it's just big me, and everybody loses their mind, and it's like, yeah, Kendrick did come out and just say, motherfuck the big three, it's just big me, but that's not the only thing he said in the verse, like, the verse had wordplay, the verse had um, cultural references, the verse had uh, alliteration, internal rhyme schemes, like, like, Kendrick came correct on this verse, this was not, no, I'm just gonna come out and drop names and hope people like the verse, no, Kendrick put together a really good verse here, um, even referencing track names from, from both artists involved, the Prince outlived Mike Jack line, I love that because Drake has been comparing himself to Michael Jackson for a decade plus, Kendrick has been comparing himself to Prince for a decade plus, I would say the general population is kind of split two ways, you have the music fan who is more into the type of music that Prince and Kendrick make, that more experimental, more um, groundbreaking or, or envelope pushing, um, and music that is really just centered more on deep and thought, thought-provoking subject matter. Whereas you look at Drake and Michael Jackson, it's mostly pop hits, stuff that's going to be played, you know, in the club, stuff that people can dance to, um, that it, it, it's it's a big it's a big difference and there's a place in this world for both types of music but i think the general population is split you have the fans who are into the more creative boundary pushing type of music that prince and kendrick make and then you have the fans who are more into the easy listening fun um pop big hits music that drake and michael jackson make um and so i feel like the prince outlived mike jack line was really good for a diss line because it's quite literally forcing everybody to pick those two sides like if you're somebody who who views music where you like it gra groundbreaking and um genre pushing envelope pushing whatever if you like that type of sound you're instantly gonna side with kendrick but if you like the more poppy um whatever you're gonna instantly side with drake so i like i like that line because it's kind of drawing a line in the sand it's basically saying like you know pick your side do you want to be somebody who's going to create you know classic albums or groundbreaking and 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 forward thinking music or are you going to be somebody who kind of just sticks to what's trendy what's poppy what is earworm music what is going to make people um you know dance and whatever um so drawing that line in the sand and being like look i'm prince he's michael jackson like take your pick like prince Prince outlived Mike Jack, so Kendrick is making very clear where his stance is in that whole conversation. Kendrick prefers that type of experimental music to just the more trendy pop stuff. Um, but your best work is a light pack. Um, for all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. He's going to see pet, pet Cemetery. So that line can be interpreted in multiple different ways. A K with all these nines can be a K as in Kendrick with all these nines, nine millimeters. Um, he gonna see Pet Cemetery, or it could be he's referring to himself as an AK-47 against a bunch of 9 millimeters. Um, but then obviously there's the K-9 wordplay and the fact that Drake's album is called For All the Dogs. And this is the second time that Kendrick has actually thrown a shot at Drake using his album title. Over a decade ago, on the BET cipher, Kendrick said, um, and nothing was the same since they dropped control and took the sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. And that was very clearly a shot at Drake because he literally used Drake's album title. Nothing was the same. Um, so, I mean, Kendrick is very good at making sure to use um, wordplay involving um, album titles or song titles. I don't know if the day is ever going to come where we get to see Kendrick in a full fledged rap battle. Maybe it's coming with Drake soon if Drake ever responds, but he is so good with these types of things. Like, I feel like if we ever just got to see Kendrick for a full track go off on somebody that he really wanted to go off on, um, I think I think he would make one of the best diss tracks that we've ever heard. Um, because the fact that he can do this with just one verse is quite impressive. But enough, enough let me get off of like that because people are going to say I'm dick riding or whatever. Let me talk about Seven Minute Drill. Um, I think seven minute drill was a good response. A lot of people were shitting on seven minute drill. A lot of people were saying like, oh, Cole, um, you know, he came sleepy. He didn't come ferocious. Um, in regards to the sleepy and ferocious thing, 
Cole has always kind of had this like laid back style of confidence. So even when he's rapping and he's murking a verse, he still has that tone of like, this is easy for me. And being that the track is called seven minute drill, which is this drill that Cole does where he attempts to write a full verse or a full track within seven minutes. Um, I think that's just the tone of this track, the tone of this track. And he even starts at light work like his PWC. So he's, he's, I think the whole tone of this track is Cole is making the point of like, this is easy for me. Um, so I'm not, I'm not mad about the tone, you know, like I think coming with the tone of it's going to be easy for me to slay you isn't a bad angle to take in a rap beef. As far as him lying, like people saying he's lying about, um, to pimp a butterfly being boring to pimp a, to pimp a butterfly is not boring to pimp a butterfly is one of the best albums ever made. And I think Cole is aware of that. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a diss and he's well aware that there are dummies on the internet, dummies on Twitter who say that To Pimp a Butterfly is boring. So he knows that if he comes out and says To Pimp a Butterfly is boring, but y'all gassed it, he knows there's going to be a bunch of people on Twitter, a bunch of J. Cole fans who are going to take that and run with it. And um, so he's just doing what he's supposed to do in a rap beef. Do I really think that J. Cole believes that To Pimp a Butterfly is boring or that Mr. Morale wasn't a good album? No, I think Cole believes that both those albums are spectacular. But he's well aware of what the internet, half of the internet has to say about those albums. And he's going to, you know, take that angle to get people on his side in this beef. Um, I think it was a smart move. I think it was a good response. And I think um, taking, you know, lines from takeover um was also clever it, it was just like it, in a way it's paying homage but some people might say it was a bad move because obviously Nas ends up winning that battle so like why are you you know taking from Jay-Z's playbook in that battle but you know as far as just a rap fan who just I love when you know stuff is paid homage or when um we get a reference back to things that you know, have occurred in hip hop history. Like I, I or I just love that. I, I I love stuff like that. Just as a rap nerd myself, with the if he wasn't dissing, then we would not be discussing them. You know, Cole also knows that's not true. Um, he knows that the whole reason Kendrick even came out and made like that was because first person shooter Cole says, "Who's the hardest MC? Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey, Aubrey or me?" But right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali. Um, so. He was literally discussing Kendrick. Kendrick wasn't dissing nobody then, but yet Kendrick was still being discussed. Um, and Kendrick is always being discussed. Like, like I don't. I, every time it's brought up, who's the best rapper in the game? It doesn't matter if Kendrick hasn't dropped in multiple years. He's still brought up in the conversation because people know that as soon as he does drop, it's gonna be massive. Um, whether, and, and it, it's probably going to be polarizing. There's going to be people who like it. There's going to be people who dislike it, but regardless, every single time he drops, it's going to be massive. So, I mean, the, if he wasn't dissing then we would not be discussing him. Like, yeah, that's, that's not true. But again, at the same time, this is a diss guys. Like, you know how many rappers said shit that wasn't true in diss tracks? Jay-Z said that Illmatic was Nas's only good album. Like, he didn't drop It Was Written right afterwards. Like, It Was Written is a classic, one of the best rap albums ever made. Jay-Z said it was mid. So, rappers lie in diss tracks all the time, man. Like, it's not, this is not nothing new. Um, It's a diss. You're supposed to be shitting on somebody. And if you know that there's people in the world who take that angle, even if you don't necessarily agree with that angle, you're trying to get people on your side in this battle, in this, in this boxing match. So, you're going to do things that get those people on your side, you're going to say things that maybe if you don't personally believe that is going to get those people on your side. So I'm not mad at Cole for any of that. Um, and, and you're just trying to say shit to get under people's skin. I'm sure Kendrick knows that there are people out there who diss on to pimp a butterfly all the time. And he knows that Cole dissing on to pump, dissing on to pimp a butterfly would get under his skin because Cole is a respected peer. So he, it's a diss, man. People going all the way out there being like, oh, his diss wasn't even true. Like, come on, man. And Kendrick saying, you know, your best work is a light pack. If he's he's talking to Drake, um, and, you know, there are definitely some people who believe that Drake's best work is a light pack. Is Drake's best work really a light pack? No. Drake Drake's best album is a very, very good album. Um, but... There are, there's also the the other side of that where you could say, well, Kendrick can call 
Drake's work a light pack because Drake doesn't have anything better than what Kendrick's put out. So Kendrick is in a viable position to say that about Drake. But Cole is not in a viable position to say that about Kendrick. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I still stand on the side of like, it's a diss. Like you're going to say things that you might not believe because it's a diss. Like the whole, the whole point is for, for you to be dissing. Um, I do like the line where Cole said, fuck the Grammys because the Crackers ain't never done nothing for me. I, I think that's another good line to go at Kendrick with because one thing that Kendrick has is a ton of fucking Grammys and the second most nominations ever behind Michael Jackson and whatever else. So like Grammys is a big thing. Pulitzer Prize, all that is a big thing for Kendrick. So I thought that was a good line for Cole to come at him with. Um, yeah, man, overall, I thought seven minute drill was a good response. Um but it seems like Cole did not feel the same way or not, not necessarily that he didn't feel the same way, but just that the res him doing it didn't sit right with his soul. I'm sure he believes it was a good response. I'm sure he believes that, you know, if he was actually trying to go to war with Kendrick, this was a good way to set it off. Um, I, I don't think he would have put it out if he thought it was a bad diss. I think he thinks thought it was a good diss and still thinks it was a good diss if he really wanted to diss him. Um, but I think Cole just did some soul searching and realized that he just does not want to diss this man. Um, now you're going to have the, the people on the internet be like, oh, you know, Cole's scared of Kendrick. Um, it's just like Lupe and Jay Electronica when they apologize to Kendrick. Like nobody wants to smoke with Kendrick. Kendrick's candy man. Everybody's scared of him. And that might be true, man. Like I don't, I, I as a rapper myself, I would not want no smoke with Kendrick. Um, that is arguably the best to ever do it right there. So you know, I, I don't blame rappers for not wanting to go to war with Kendrick. Um, but I don't think that I, I, I think J, J. Cole was being very honest in, in, you know, what he said. I don't think it was anything about not wanting or, or being scared of Kendrick. I don't think it was anything like that. I think he was very transparent in that. Like the fact that he even put out the diss in the first place shows that he's not scared to go at Kendrick. He quite literally just did it. Um, but I, I think he was being very honest and transparent in saying that it just wasn't sitting right with his soul and his spiritual, how he, like, in his spirit. Um, and I can see that, man. Like, if this is somebody who you highly respect, who you consider to be a homie of yours, um, and who you would rather, you, rather see, you know, um, collaboration and support with than tearing down and beef with, um, especially when majority of Kendrick's issue seems to be with Drake and not with Cole, you know, I could see how that would sit with Cole. And if it's not something Cole wanted to do in the first place, but he got pressured into it by everyone around him telling him it's what he had to do. I could see that eating at him over the next few days. Like, man, I really gave into peer pressure, gave into worldly things and misaligned myself with what my spirit and my soul was telling me I should do. And he, that seemed very transparent um, on that stage to me that he seemed very honest about that. And I believe him. And as a man, um, as somebody who tries to walk in alignment with God myself, like I understand him fully and I respect him for that decision. And honestly, like I almost respect Cole even more after this whole debacle. I know everybody is shitting on him. I know everybody is clowning on him, but man, like it takes a lot of nuts to come out in front of the entire world and be like, look, man, this dude I just dissed, I didn't really want to diss him. I take it back. I apologize. He's one of the greatest. Go ahead and knock me on the chin and I'll take it. Like, it takes a lot of balls to say that, knowing that a bunch of goofies on the internet, a bunch of immature people on the internet who just want to see messy rap beef are going to are gonna fucking shit on you for it. So... I respect Cole a ton for responding in the first place because as a rapper myself, um, like rap is competitive by nature, man. Like every time you're on a verse with us, with somebody, even if it's your homies, like maybe you're not trying to body them, but you're trying to make sure that you hold your ground. You're trying to make sure that you don't get bodied. You're trying to make sure like, it's just like, it's just like playing basketball, man. Like when you go out to hoop, you don't want to be the one the one person dragging the team down like you want everybody to get get their shots up you want everybody to be in fluid be in motion everybody's doing what they're supposed to do you don't want to be the one dude out here chucking bricks um 
And hip hop is the same way. I view it as a competitive sport, man. Like you don't want to be the one dude out here chucking bricks. And same way in basketball, if some dudes out here talking shit like, "Oh, I'd smoke you one on one," blah 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 blah, like it's only fitting that you play a one on one matchup with this fool after the pickup game. Like it's only it's only fitting that you do that. Like that's how competitive sports work. Um, so I I respect Cole for responding in the first place, just based off the fact that I feel like him choosing to respond even though it's not what he wanted to do in his spirit um i think it shows that that competitive he still has that competitive nature as a rapper like he 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 still wouldn't just back down and a lot of people are saying this is him backing down but i don't i don't see it as him backing down i see it as like him just being honest about look this isn't really what i want to do like i don't have no beef with kendrick um, you know, I got my little sparring match in there. I threw my jabs. So he might throw some back, but like, that's the homie. I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into something. And I saw a bunch of people on Twitter talking about, oh, this is Kendrick and Cole. Like nobody thought it was going to come to slugs. Nobody thought it was going to, you know, turn into anything beyond just rap. We just wanted to see two of the best rappers rap. And it's like, yeah, of course, that's 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 what we assume because we know Cole and Kendrick as people and we know they would never want it to escalate to that. Um, and, you know, that's what we would want as fans because we just want to see two of the greatest go at it. But you know how these things go, man, like like stuff gets taken personally. Words can dig deep. Um, and if something is said that just really rubs somebody the wrong way, things behind the scenes can get messier than you would ever really want. And I think Cole is aware of that. And I think Cole could see that from the, I'm speaking from an outside perspective. I don't know any of these people personally, but um, for me, it seems like there's real somewhat of real animosity between Drake and Kendrick and some and definitely real animosity between Metro Boomin and, and Future and Drake. Um, and I think Cole could see that and could see that like there's an element to what is going on right now that is like real rap beef like it's not just it's not just two of the great sparring like I, I think Cole started to feel like if he got himself involved in this he would be involving himself in real deal rap beef and um man Cole is 40 like and, and he's seen what real deal rap beef has done to the legends and the greats coming before him and not that he's scared scared to die or anything but I, I think he just doesn't want something to escalate to that point um and he doesn't want to involve himself in something that he really shouldn't be involved in is if he has no animosity towards Kendrick and he has no animosity towards Drake and he has no animosity towards Metro and Future whatever like he's probably looking at it like what am I doing involving myself in real deal malicious beef if I don't feel like that. Um, and I think he realized he was only doing it because worldly pressures. And as anybody who is spiritual, like it doesn't feel good when you know that you did something just because you gave into worldly pressures. Like it doesn't feel good to know that you didn't do what your soul was telling you to do. Like Cole's soul, his whole time was probably telling him, man, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go at Kendrick, but Everybody was telling him is what he had to do, so it's what he did. And um, yeah, man, I think he was being very honest and very transparent on that stage. And I think it takes a lot of balls. And I respect him a ton for it. I respect him for, I respect him for not backing down from Kendrick in the first place and responding. And I respect him for coming out and being honest about the fact that he didn't even want to do that. Um, so a lot of people are gonna shit on Cole. This is gonna be. This is going to be a tough thing for Cole. Every time Cole says in raps that he's the best rapper or nobody wants to smoke, like, people are going to shit on it. Um, but, man, like, I, I, I definitely I definitely respect Cole a little bit more for this. Where do we go from here is the question, right? Because, like, this is probably the first time. I mean, the only other time I can remember rap somebody apologizing in rap beef is when Jay Z apologized for Super Ugly, which, by the way, he should have apologized for that because that um, was a moment in in rap where it just it just got gross, man. It was just like, uh, like you're not even talking about who's a better rapper anymore. You're just trying to be like a gross human being. Um, so, and, and Jay Z's mom, when your mom steps in and forces you to apologize, um, that's when you know 
things got too far. So that's the only other time I can remember somebody apologizing in a rap beef is Jay-Z apologizing for Super Ugly. Um, but his mom made him do that. This is the first time I can I, I, I've, I think I've ever seen a rapper drop a diss track and then come out and be like, yo, I, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't think we've ever seen that before. So what happens from here? Like, I will say I saw Musa TDE, who is Top Dog's son. Um, I believe he's Top Dog's son. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. But I saw somebody on Twitter say he was Top Dog's son. Um, I, I've seen Musa's Twitter account before, but I didn't know he was Top Dog's son until I saw someone say that. So if I'm wrong about that, let me know. But I saw Musa tweet out that song. Um, it's too late to apologize. It's too late. Which is hella funny. That that shit's hella funny. Um, but so what does that mean? Does that mean that Kendrick already has something in the works in response to seven minute drill and it's too late and Kendrick's going to drop it anyway? Um, is it just Musa fucking around doing some goofy shit on Twitter? Like what? you know, what, what's going on, um, so I, I don't know, I, I will say what I want to happen from here, right, I kind of want Kendrick to leave Cole alone, um, not completely, you know, Cole can still catch some strays, because he did, he did drop a, a three-minute diss track on you, um, so, you know, you definitely can give that man some strays to, give him some sh shots on the chin to just be like, don't ever do that shit again. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I'd be cool with that, but I don't want Kendrick to come out with like a full diss track, just obliterating J Cole. I just, I don't know. I would, I, I don't think it needs that. I, I almost think J Cole has like kind of conceded at this point. Like, he, I don't think J Cole is like admitting to Kendrick being the better rapper or anything like that. But I think he's, kind of just saying like look i just don't want to do this like i don't want to be a part of this bro like um and i think i don't know man i think kendrick knows kendrick is a better rapper than cole and i i i just don't think that he needs to come out and obliterate j cole to prove that i think um i think majority of the masses have that opinion as well and i think even j cole fans to a certain extent like you know, kind of, not all of them, most of them don't probably, but there are some J. Cole fans who still kind of acknowledge, like, look, if there's one dude, you know, who is on or above Cole, it's Kendrick. Um, so, I don't know, man. I just I just don't think Kendrick needs to do that. What I would want to see happen is Kendrick to pop up again on We Still Don't Trust You, the Future and, and uh, Metro album, the second one that's coming out this Friday, and just go the fuck in on Drake again. Just keep going at Drake until Drake says something because that's who this was all about from the beginning. Like, like, like that was about Drake. The whole reason Kendrick was even throwing shots at Cole in that song was because Cole clicked up with Drake. If Cole didn't click up with Drake, there would have been nothing for Cole. And most of it was at Drake, even outside of the little stuff for Cole. So th this is, this is, this was ori originally about Drake. Um, I think it should still be about Drake. Somehow, it became about Kendrick and Cole. Um, you know, we all got lost in the sauce, and, and it became a Kendrick and Cole thing, and Drake has just been able to just sit quietly and not say anything when this has been about him this entire time. I mean, Future and Metro's problem isn't with Cole, it's with Drake. The entire entirety of the Like That verse wasn't at Cole, it was at Drake. So... I, I think I, I would I would love to see Kendrick come back on We Still Don't Trust You and just go at Drake again. Just keep going at Drake until Drake either concedes or responds. Um, and I saw some rumors that Drake is planning on actually dropping his response the day, the day that the Future and Metro album comes out. So this this upcoming Friday. And if that happens, man. That would be sick. That would be sick. Um, I would like to hear what Drake would respond with. I, despite what people say, I think Drake has actually fared pretty well in his rap beefs. Um, Pusha T bodied him. But prior to Story of Adidon, Drake's response to Pusha was not bad. He had really good wordplay in there. Um, had, took some solid shots and everything. It's just when Pusha decided to come back again with Story of Adidon, he just, that's one of the greatest diss tracks ever. So, 
um, you know, he lost that battle, but he did win the Meek Mill battle. And I do think that in the battle with Pusha T, he held his own more than I and other people thought he would have. Um, at least in my opinion, like I think Duppy Freestyle is a much better diss than it gets remembered for. Um, so I'm, I'm, if 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 Drake does respond, I'm excited to see what he responds with. I think it would be a better response than a lot of people um, perceive. But <laughs> um, I think if Drake does respond and provoke Kendrick to um, really go in on him, I think I think that would end up being a problem for Drake. Um, so if Drake makes the executive decision to not respond, I would fully understand it. It is a little bit different in this scenario because I do think there is some animosity between Drake and Kendrick. It's not just friendly sparring. Um, and, and, you know, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know what kind of information one might have on the other and whatever else. So that all factors into whether or not you really want to flick the lighter and light some shit on fire. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. But that's what I would like to see. I would like to see Kendrick keep going at Drake. When he when Kendrick said it's time for him to prove that he's a problem, he wasn't talking about Cole. He was talking about Drake, bro. Like, like we know Cole lyrically is a problem. Is he a problem for Kendrick? I don't know. Like I I, I don't I don't think I don't think Cole would win that if they went toe to toe for an extended period of time. But it's it was Drake that Kendrick was talking about. Drake is the one who people are always like, oh, he's he's not lyrically capable of standing with the other two guys in the big three and all this stuff. And people are always attacking Drake's pen game and talking about how he has ghostwriters and everything. Like, that's who that line was about. It, 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 let's get it up. It's time to, for him to prove that he's a problem. He's talking to Drake. It's time for you, Drake, to prove that you're a problem. And Drake has not done that. Um, so, I don't know, man. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm Part of me likes the fact that Cole has kind of bowed out of this because it was never really about Cole in the first place. It was always about Drake. So I want I want this whole rap civil war to redirect back to what the focus is. The focus here is Drake. The focus here, the whole album, We Don't Trust You, is about Drake. The whole album, We Still Don't Trust You, is about Drake. The whole Like That Verse is about Drake. So I want that to redirect. I want, to, I want us to... <laughs> To, to pr bring our focus back to what this conversation was originally about, what it should be about. And I feel like Cole bowing out has kind of made room to where now all eyes are on Drake. Like, Drake, what are you going to do? And if Kendrick comes out this Friday and hops on We Still Don't Trust You, or maybe it's not even Kendrick. Maybe it's another rapper that they get to hop on We Still Don't Trust You to do a diss towards Drake. If Drake gets dissed again which he will like that the whole we still don't trust you is about drake so he he will get dissed again whether it's kendrick or somebody else but if drake gets dissed again and still has nothing to say um this whole thing was extremely anticlimactic and kendrick just proves once again that he is candy man and everybody is afraid to say his name um except for cole apparently Cole, <laughs> Cole wasn't afraid to say his name, even though he apologized after afterwards. He still did it, which is which. That gets my respect instantly because he's the first person to do that. He's that is one thing J Cole has that other rappers can't say. He is the first person to come out and blatantly go at Kendrick lyrically. Um, and regardless of what you have to say about his apology and all this other stuff. No one else in rap can say that. No one else can in rap can say that they directly, non-subliminally, and openly went at Kendrick Lamar. I mean, you could say Big Crit kind of did with Mount Olympus because, but even then, that wasn't really a diss. That was more Crit just being like, I'm the greatest. You could say that like Papoose and a couple other rappers responded to the control verse, but it was, I don't know, man. I think Cole is the first person to go at Kendrick on this large of a scale. Like, all those rappers, them going at Kendrick isn't the same thing. Like, it, 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 but to be on the stage and the pedestal that Cole is on, like, I mean, I, he, he deserves the respect for even just doing it in the first place. Um, and as a man outside of rap, um, he deserves the respect for being entirely transparent about it not sitting right with him spiritually as well that's where i stand on it um here's my scoreboard right now i'll give kendrick shit man i'll give kendrick 
three points for fucking starting this shit off in in an incredible way. Just one verse that completely fucked up the entire game. Um, and the fact that that one verse is having the staying power to live through all these things that have happened since. Um, I, I'll give Kendrick three points there. I'll give Kendrick two, or I'll give Cole two points for um, both responding and being entirely transparent and not just giving into what the world wants him to do. Um, and I give Drake negative three points for only having, I give Drake negative three points for each IG caption he had about the situation. I'm hoping that doing this video kind of gets me back on track with the podcast. Um, I've been in album mode heavy, um, working on this next project and just in general, other life things going on. Um, that's just kind of gotten in the way of me being able to edit these episodes, but we have a bunch of episodes recorded. I have a throwback review with the homies recorded that i'm gonna um edit and everything i have a couple interviews that i want to edit and put up as well um and i'm hoping this video kind of kickstarts me back into the podcast groove i'm nearing up on finishing um the album and everything so yeah man hopefully we can get back in the groove with with these episodes um thank you guys for listening where do you guys stand on the whole cole and kendrick thing um you know do you respect Cole less for apologizing? Do you respect him more for apologizing? How do you guys feel about the diss tracks themselves? Was Cole's diss good? Was Kendrick's diss good? Um, if Cole never apologized, would you say that Cole had the lead right now? Uh, just let me know. Let me know what you guys feel in the comments below. My name is Kenny Moss. Um, check out my latest mixtape, Las Sombras, and check out uh, my album from last year, Michael Kenneth Smith. Um, and that's it, man. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.